Welcome, my name is Martin Dreiling from University of Munich and I would like to share with you some experience on a clinical case which really represents the challenges in daily practice and this is a presentation provided to you by the Lymphoma Hub and for this case discussion we'll discuss on mantle cell lymphoma. So what's the special thing about mantle cell lymphoma? Uh, I think we have to be aware this is a spectrum of disease. Yes, there are some kind of indolent cases, but it's fair to say this only represents 10% of cases. The majority of cases have initial high response rates but a continuous relapse pattern. And finally we have even what's called the blastoid variant, which is a very aggressive disease. How do we try to differentiate these cases in clinical routine? Well, it's simple. We check for cell proliferation. And therefore, by simply applying a routine marker uh, being applied worldwide in clinical histopathology, which is ki 67 we are able to differentiate the very high-risk cases, which are the ones with ki 67 above 30%, or the standard risk case. And then in addition, what we also do, we apply simple clinical parameters. In fact, a mantle cell lymphoma specific so called MIPI has been established, Mantle Cell Lymphoma International Prognostic Index. And that incorporates performance status, age, LDH, and leukocyte count. And just by these four simple parameters, we're able to differentiate very low risk cases or very high risk cases. Now that's very important that ki 67 is independent of the clinical parameters. So all over we are able to identify a patient cohort which has a five year overall survival above 90% or in the opposite unfortunately we are also able to identify high risk patients with a rather dismal outcome and an overall survival of only 20% after five years. But let's get back to our case. So I would like to discuss with you a 67-year-old male. Uh, at first relapse, in fact, in 2010, he had no B symptoms. Leukocytes were slightly elevated. LDH was significantly elevated, uh, one and a half times the upper normal limit. And it was an advanced stage disease, which is typical for mantle cell with GI involvement and bone marrow involvement as well. So the first question, according to the risk factors I told you, what is the risk profile of this patient? Well, it's fair to say this is a high risk patient based on age, LDH and leukocyte count. And that's another message. The patients where we try to spare toxicity, the elderly patients, these are probably the highest risk patients. So what are the treatment options, let's say in 2010, in first relapse? Well, we first of all could go for conventional chemotherapy. Might it be benamustine or hydrozorac? You could be very um, more ambitious and then go for allotransplant. But of course, there are also quite a number of molecular targeted approaches, like bortezomib, at that time not yet ibrutinib, but we had temsorolimus and lenalidomide. Which way did we go? Well, based on the uh, high risk profile, specifically the elevated LDH, we went for hoides RSC plus rituximab. Is that still representing current standard of care? I would say not really, because nowadays, even in first relapse, we would consider more uh, the addition of molecular targeted approaches. Anyway, we achieved the PR, but what was unexpected, after three cycles only, we observed some progressive diarrhea. And what was the reason for that? The reason was the typical GI involvement of uh, the colon by mantle cell lymphoma. So now we're talking about a 68-year-old male, second relapse in 2011. At that time, essentially, besides diarrhea, he had no B symptoms. Leukocytes were normal and LDH was only slightly elevated. Again, still advanced stage disease. So what to do? Similar options as at first relapse. So just to repeat, you could again go for another R chemo combination. You could go for allogeneic transplant 
or you could go for moleculars. Well, in this situation, we decided not to go for allotransplant because of the uh, impaired general status of the patient. He was 68 and he was not really in it to buy the additional risk of allotransplant. But what we decided is to move on to the molecular targeted approaches. And here it is, what can we expect from the typical molecular targeted approaches in mantle cell? It's fair to say with essentially only one exception, one or two exceptions, response rate is in the range of 30%. And median progression uh, free survival is about six months. So yes, it works, but it's not a home run. So what are we doing? Well, we do the same as we always do in oncology. We combine our forces. So we go for chemo plus moleculars. And that is exactly what, what we did. What are the options? Well, first of all, there's a very interesting randomized trial with bortezomib in combination with chemotherapy. And that really results in almost doubling of duration of remission, at least in first-line treatment. So that could be an option. In fact, we, our own um, network performs a study with a combination hydrozoroc plus minus bortezomib. We did not choose this approach because the patient has already failed hydrozoroc. Alternatively, we've done some in vitro data showing some synergism between bendamustine plus tamsurolimus. And this is exactly what we applied. And this gentleman was a part of a phase one trial which is nowadays published. And to make a long story short, all patients of this phase one part have responded to this combination. So is, there is something in it. Finally, what is the new big kit on the block? Well, of course, it's ibrutinib. It's the BTK inhibitor. Let me just very shortly say, it's not only BTK, it's a very complicated network in the malignant cell. At the top there is only the B-cell receptor, but then there is a nightmare of different interactions. So it's, it's like looking for a pin in the haystack to find the really, let's say, the Achilles heel of the malignant cell. Anyway, ibrutinib, it's fair to say it's very well tolerated patients have very few side effects. There is some slight increase of uh, infectious complications, it's fair to say, but it's much less than chemo. We do have a certain rate of atrial fibrillation, you have to take that into account. And also there is some risk of, of, of bleeding. So for patients who do receive anticoagulation, you have to be very cautious. Anyway, efficacy is very good. Overall, 70%. But again, I told you in the beginning, mantle cell lymphoma is a spectrum of disease. And accordingly, response rate is about 100% in the cases with low KI67, the cases with low cell proliferation. Whereas in the high risk cases with very high cell proliferation, response rate drops to 50%. So even with these very effective compounds, we have to consider combinations in an intelligent way. And this is really the challenge for the next years. My personal bias is that I believe that even nowadays in mantle cell lymphoma, that will probably remain the same for the next five years, unspecific but effective chemotherapy will be part and remain part of these combinations. But this is ex exactly what has to be explored by independent academic trials. And in my point of view, that is the most efficient uh, way of quality control in favor of all patients. That had been a short case discussion, really showing the challenges in relapsed mantle cell lymphoma. Again, thank you for your attention and thanks for the Lymphoma Hub for support.